them off! Ah, they're stinging me! Ah, they're stinging me! Ah, they're all over me! They're all over me! Hey folks, Chef Nick here today. We're gonna be uh, working on our Langstroth hives and I'm actually gonna show you how to put together your frames here and the hive body itself. Now, if you're interested in getting into beekeeping, this is not necessary. You can buy all this already done for you. I also love woodworking. That's one of my hobbies, hence the name Home, Health, and Hobby for my channel. And you don't even, you can buy, like I said, you can buy this all put together and um, you don't need as many tools as you'll see in this video. So let's get started. I got my trusty woody hammer here. So uh, I've had this thing for quite some time. Actually one of the things my parents got me as a Christmas gift one year was a hammer. I had an addiction to sinking nails into wood. It is very satisfying. Now these cannot be assembled upside down if you buy them from a reputable bee supplier. As you can see the top here the box joint is made properly to go up into the ridge where the frames will rest. Alright, so the humidity got to these, so I'm going to need to get some clamps to square these out when I hammer them in. Okay, so what I was going to say about these nails is these are seven penny nails. I'm just going to sink them. <laughs> that was satisfying. It's been a long time since I've sunk nails. I usually work with screws and joinery. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're going I'm just starting off on each side like this on each face on the front in the very center. All right. Two on the front face, two on the back face. I guess right now it doesn't really matter which side it is, so it's not square. Are you kidding me? All right, so I made my first mistake so you don't have to. Make sure you get the handle on the outside. Make sure you only hammer your nails in first on one, on one face before going to an adjacent face because I was able to knock this out like so, I wouldn't have been able to do that if I had a nail going in this way, that way, because it would have kept me from going outwards with the face plate. All right, outside handle, outside handle, outside handle, outside handle, good. All right, handle, handle, ridge. All right, good, it is in, squared it up. How many clamps do I have? Not enough. All right, so that just holds it true. All right, we're not having any come through the other side of the wood, which is good. All right, I just want to give you a quick tip here on nails. When you're sinking your nails, make sure that they don't have a bend in them because that's going to translate significantly and the, the tracking of the nail is gonna go way off course and may pop out the side. So uh, I can actually feel them when I roll them in my fingers. Um, that one's got maybe just a slight tiny tiny little bend but it's not enough to make a difference so it's okay. Now I'm going to move on to the sides, these right here. One thing I love about the box joints and nails is that the box joints reinforce the fibers of the corners. Um, when you're sinking a nail, it, the wood tends, tends to want to split, but these box joints are reinforcing that from, and keeping it from happening. And these nails are actually expanding the fibers ever so slightly, which is why you can't just put two pieces of pine together and nail them like this. I'm sure you could use a Craig jig or something like that. Send me a link to your video if you've made Langstroth hives with Craig jigs. I mean, there's not really that much difference between this and a cabinet. All right, all the box joints are secured. 
These are the side pieces. If you look here, real close, if you were to put these two together, imagine this in the side of the hive. This is going to be right here, down in the hive along the side, right like this way. And uh, if you see right here, in between each piece is what's called bee space. It is three eighths of an inch. It's hard to tell in this construction square. It's for construction. We've got the pieces for the other side. Now the important thing to remember about the bee space is that three eighths of an inch between here is the perfect space between uh, two objects in the hive that a bee will not build burr comb and is just big enough for their little bodies to go through. These are the bottom portions. We have our foundation here. This is plastic with wax rolled on it. Now I went with this for my first hive. Um, I want to do organically but for the sake of learning I went with the plastic first and then I will venture out into natural foundation and then eventually into letting them build their own comb with wires across. So we're going to take these out. Now this frame foundation here, just slip right into these cracks right here. This is the top portion of the frames. Just sink right in there like so. This goes in here and this gives a foundation for the bees to build upon. They draw, that's what's called drawing out their comb. They're gonna draw wax out of their little wax glands to the same pattern as this right here. Just another little quick information tip here. These can't be confused. The joinery right here will only fit on this side of the side of the frame. You can't mix it up. If, if it doesn't go easy, you're doing it wrong. So this goes right here on both sides. This goes up into that groove and then this goes down in the bottom here make sure to line up our foundation voila we got ourselves a frame now it's not done here we actually have to fasten these we're going to use staples i don't have any staples right now so it's a trip to harbor freight for me All right, so just took a break. I played around a little bit. I'm sorry, my neighbor right now is on his riding mower right now, so I guess we'll just have to deal with the sound. I played around with the brad nailer, and I've got 18 gauge nails, and those seem to work okay. Uh, I hope that they, they they followed true. And I just put one in here, one in here. I'm going to show you what I, how I orient the nail gun to the grain of the wood because that's important. For the same reason that I didn't put any wood glue in the in the joints here because the bees are going to fill it with propolis. And if you think one nail isn't enough, normally it wouldn't be. This is going to be glued together as well with propolis. The bees are going to also form comb up into the wood right here down on the bottom and the top. And they'll actually make this nice and sturdy. Our job right now is to only make sure that this is fastened so it doesn't fall apart in the beginning of this frame's life and that it's square. For the sake of efficiency, we're going to assemble all of these upside down before we move over to the nailer. So we've got this 18 gauge brad nailer here. You only need one nail because what happens if you need to take this apart? You're not, you don't want this glued together with wood glue because the glue is stronger than the wood itself. And um, orienting your nail gun so that the magazine of the nails are running parallel to this top bar. Just one nail. Flip this around. So here's where we're adding in our foundation. There's that ridge up in the top part of the top bar of the hive and we're going to take our bottom bar here. Like I said, can't get this wrong as far as this being mixed up with the top part of this side bar. Again, always orienting the magazine to be perfectly parallel with this so that you don't get any side shoots on the nail. 
very very tiny little nail right there you can see almost blew out the side so be careful on the tip of your gun as well uh, how far away you have that from the edge of your workpiece it flew true all right so there's number two and these are loose in here as well and that's that's another thing to keep in mind that's not going to be a problem later on You little birdie on your nest? Yeah? Is that your nest? Are you keeping eggies warm? What you doing? So we got our frames assembled, the body of the hive assembled. Uh, no glue was necessary. I used some tools that were very helpful for me, but definitely not necessary for you to get into beekeeping. Um, as as I mentioned earlier that one of my hobbies is woodworking I really enjoy working with wood and putting things together myself uh, but like all means don't let this intimidate you into uh, thinking that you can't get into beekeeping now I will say something about beekeeping I, I, I have like a lot of knowledge of how to do bees but I have z almost zero experience I did vacuum up some bees out of the uh, 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 ground hole and those are very opportunistic bees um, but they all died I think it had to do with the queen but I've done a lot of reading in the backyard beekeeper a really good book recommended by somebody I don't have a mentor right now uh, I have been brushing up on a lot of different stuff on YouTube there's plenty of videos out there and it th being a beekeeper is not about the honey uh, for me being a beekeeper and getting into this hobby is um, more about being a contributing member of society, whether pe other people, my neighbors, friends, family know it or not. Um, it's, it's important for me to help with pollination and to give bees a place to live. One extra colony is gonna help out our world just that much more uh, with colony, collapse disorder or uh, hive collapse disorder um, and bees not being able to properly use the nutrients from genetically modified organisms i.e. wheat, corn, and soy uh, it's killing them and to me it's just plain as day that uh, it has to do with these genetically modified organisms, these plants uh, it's not good for the bees so little side rant here uh, what do we in our infinite wisdom do in response to colony collapse disorder? That's right. They make genetically modified bees. And really, we've, we've just got to get back to basics here. We've got to get to heirloom varieties. We've got to, got to get to organic. Organic is actually cheaper to do than conventional farming. So a little bit off of that rant, I'll get back on track here. Being a beekeeper is really good for kids especially because they will learn what's happening when in our society and in your local area, in your community. It's gonna help them understand. Ginger! Ginger, come here! Good girl. I just recognized she was gone. Um. See where she hides. Anyways, um, it allows kids to get off their cell phone. It gives them something to do. It gets them out of the house, off the computer, off the tablet, off the phone. Uh, it really, really pisses me off to see that. Uh, especially middle schoolers with cell phones. When I was a kid, I didn't get a cell phone until I was 18. All right, not, I keep ranting. Um, a little note on beekeeping clubs. It's really important to get into a beekeeping club, especially if you're new. I'm ashamed to say that I'm not part of a beekeeping club. Um, I can't go to the beekeepers clubs because they're on a night that I have school. So it's important because they're gonna know what to do when. During the fall, which is the season right now that, I've, that I'm about to get my bees, uh, up north, it's gonna start getting cold. Here in Florida, we're not gonna have to deal with snow and overwintering our bees, but um, there are <laughs> many different things throughout the year that you have to do, and 
you have to anticipate and be ready to handle when they show when those incidences show up not saying that they will show up but you need to know what to look for and as a beginning beekeeper or even an, interme an intermediate beekeeper you may not know what you're looking at you're going to need to know about mites viruses bacteria uh, pests certain types of pest management you're going to need to know about whether or not your colony is healthy overall procrastination does not work in this game it's important to get someone on your side that's willing to give you advice and knowledge the added benefit of experience to help you get through an entire year with your bee colony. Get your kids involved. Don't be scared of bees. If you are watching this video and you happen to not be in beekeeping but you know of a wild swarm somewhere, make sure that you can do what you can to keep it from getting killed. Connect someone who has that wild swarm, maybe it be in their attic or in their wall or in their workshop or something, and connect that person with a beekeeper who can come and get those bees for free and put them into one of their empty hives. That's right, we're just gonna paint happy little beehives. You see? Happy little beehives. You see, there are no mistakes. We just have happy little accidents. Now when we're painting our beehive, we wanna make sure we do it well in advance before we even get any bees in it. I'd say at least three days so that any kind of uh, any kind of odors are gone and we're only painting the outside if we paint the inside of it it's going to affect the hive's ability to breathe properly wood is a porous substance it's a porous product and we want to make sure that the moisture in the hive can get out now if you paint the inside of the hive, this is latex paint. Especially oil paint will affect the ability of the hive to breathe properly. You want that ventilation. They need to keep dry. Otherwise, they would be doing it on tree branches. Now, while you may have heard of tree branches having bee colonies on them, that's only for maybe three hours to three day period. It's the swarming, colony actually swarming, looking for a new place to live. So if you've ever heard of it happening on a tree branch or something along those lines, it, those bees are looking for the perfect place for the hive to live. I'm really just gonna slap this on here just so that it has some protection from the elements here in central Florida. And again, only the outside. We're not doing the top here. We're not doing the bottom, just the outside. It's gonna help shed water a little bit more and make it a little bit more water resistant. All right, so this is dried a little bit. Uh, I stepped inside, took a break, allowed this to dry off. I just wanted to give a quick tip real quick before I let the video go too far. Um, there's a way you can paint all four sides of this without getting your stuff messy. So there's just something right here that this can rest on, the inner, the inside can rest on. And um, I know that you may not have this same setup right here, but consider taking a tabletop and a couple clamps and a piece of wood and clamping it to the tabletop so that it extends out. And then you can also, you can put your hive on it as so and paint and rotate like so. I'm gonna add in a little titanium white. Don't want to wash a brush while you're waiting for your first layer of paint to dry? Check out this tip. Cling film as your grandma would call it. You got some clean film? Just like that. Put it in your garage fridge next to your lemongrass. Subscribe! The things I do for an outro